This is Rogodowski of WeAreChange.org here at the 2014 Makers Fair in Queens, New York. And I just found James here, who has a very interesting invention. Can you tell us what this thing is here? Well, what this thing we have right here is a 3D printed hydroponic system. What we're using is recycled bottles as well as a few 3D printed parts. There's a lot of 3D printers here at the fair, so people are seeing all these trinkets, bracelets, coat hangers, and that's all well and good. But we like to have a product that's usable in a day-to-day -day situation that we can reuse, that we can use to better ourselves and stuff like that. So it's a hydroponic system, so we're growing plants without dirt. Um, you remove the soil so we drip the nutrients into the water and it goes right over the roots. It keeps the plant growing more plant and less roots. Yeah. Uh, other than that, it's a vertical system. Most hydroponics run horizontally, so it saves a lot of space. You can hang four or five plants in the space of about one coat rack, which is ridiculously space saving, especially for people who have greenhouses. That's a lot of headroom, not a lot of shelf space, yeah. right? So other than that, the system is also really uh, cheap because it's recycled, it's made with 3D printed parts. It's also very energy efficient. We use an air pump, a marina air pump, the same kind you use in your aquarium. Uh, because of uh, the low energy usage on it, you can run it 24-7, it's a couple pennies a month, it's no big deal to anyone. And uh, we use the air to lift the water through the ventrilli system uh, to stop us from having to pump water vertically, which is a challenge because water is heavy as well as you need a bigger, heavier, more expensive pump, right? Yeah. So, other than that, the system's pretty self-contained, as you can see. Uh, the water comes uh, through, I have the magic piece here in my pocket, through this little device right here. You Which get, is 3D printed. These are 3D printed. Uh, this piece in particular cannot be made on anything but a 3D printer because of the complexity of the curves in it and the way it's designed inside. So what happens is two lines of air go in and shoot straight up the line. And what that does is it causes a vacuum in the third tube down here. So it pulls a little bit of water at a time as well as shooting the air up. This gives you a nice air lifted drip drip effect, exactly what your hydroponic system needs to run. So it brings it up the tube here, up to the top of the system. It drips into one, down to the next, down to the next, uh, essentially watering all your plants all in sequence. And what this does is it means it's watering all the time. You can't overwater, you can't underwater, you can forget about it for days and there's no problem. You only have to top off the bottom tank, the reservoir at the bottom. This is a pretty big bin but you can use anything bigger than a four liter milk jug. Uh, you only have to top up the water every two weeks, keep an eye on the plants to make sure they're healthy and happy, and uh, you can have delicious vegetables in the corner of your apartment yeah. all year round. And like, you can program this through software on your computer and have the exact amount of water you need, the exact amount of nutrients definitely. you need. The software, the software that we're working on developing right now is, is to fully automate and monitor the system so that let's say you go on vacation for a month, you can monitor the pH, you can turn the lights on and off if you're using lights as opposed to a window, etc, etc. The, yeah. the limits are endless because with stepper motors and whatnot, soon enough you'll be opening your curtains by remote control, right? Yep, yep. and everything digitizing, everything involving. Exactly, so, right? so if there's a zombie apocalypse, if there's a police state martial law happens, or if you're just interested in sustainable communities and growing your own food, especially in a city where you can't really do that, you could do that also in your windowsill? Oh, on your windowsill or off your balcony, because we have a lot of people with apartments, especially in a place like New York where no one's got a yard, yeah. and they're like, well I can't grow a vegetable garden. It's like, well, yes you can, L let me show you how. And one of the other things we're doing, like you mentioned, the zombie apocalypse, Everyone likes the self-sustainability uh, aspect of it. We're working on uh, finding some pumps that will work well with our 12-volt solar panel. So as soon as we get it on a solar panel, then like you said, you can take it outside, you can take it anywhere, no problem, right? Yeah. And no power cords. Have it inside here during the winter and also grow your food indoors and then have your own products. Well, your own yeah, one of the other yeah. things about it is because it's just a hanging system, if you're hanging it from a hook inside your house or from your balcony, if you want to move the system, you pick up the system and you walk somewhere else with it, no big deal, right? So if you're interested in starting off building your own kind of garden in your own window, if you're in a city, you could also do this. How do you get started? Where do people find you? What's the first step to really well, get this done? Right now, all the parts, the schematics for all the 3D printed parts and the plans to help you build a system are available online for free. Uh, you can check them out on Thingiverse, 3D Ponics is search. You can also go to 3dponics.com or 3dprintler.com is our 3D printing website. All of these places you can find the parts. Uh, 3D Ponics is an online community that we're trying to build right now. Uh, we just got funded on Kickstarter, so we're building the website really big really fast we're trying to make it so streamlined and easy for people to connect that you're gonna find your neighbors with systems you're gonna find your neighbors with printers it's gonna be easier and easier for people to build one of these without even having to contact us about it but definitely you can come find us and drop us a line we're always interested in, in talking to schools and and community centers and and community uh, gardens a lot of people are doing that these days yeah. we're always interested in sending out systems and helping people get started 
Uh, but like I said, all the parts and schematics right now are free online, so we encourage, we're encouraging people to go and do this, do this now, because uh, the more people that we have building the system, and, and as soon as you put one in your house and start using it and feedback on the website, you become a research station for everyone else in the world using one of these systems right now. So I don't know hardly anything about gardening. Like I said, we're a 3D printing company, so it's just an idea for us. But someone in another country said, well, roots don't like the sunlight, so we can 3D print parts to cover that. We can 3D print accessories for all sorts of things. And you have these things right here too, and th this is what we're talking about here, right? This is what we're talking about. These are the... Uh, these are the covers that go over, but like I said, it was just someone else's idea and, and uh, if you bought a product in a box, took it home and set it up and had an idea on how to improve it, what do you do? You call the CEO, well that's a lot of work and yeah. this way we're all talking with each other all the time, we're all trying to advance all the time, no one's trying to profit off this right now, I'm not trying to put a product in a box with a sticker and sell yeah. it to you, right? So like I said, open source, that's the key. A lot of people are asking questions like, what do I feed it, what do I use for a medium, like that's one of the benefits of it being such an open open source and versatile system, so you can put anything in it. You can feed any plants, you can use any plants, you can use any medium. You don't have bottles that are two liter, you can use a small bottle. Uh, if you don't have a window, you can use grow lights, right? So people need to realize this isn't something that's like, here's a square, stay inside it. It's like, let's all build it together, right? Well, that's what happens when you open source. I'm very happy you guys are doing this. It's a very useful product. So if you're interested in growing your own food, maybe getting off the electrical grid, definitely check these guys out. The description will be in the link below. James, again, thank you so much for open no sourcing problem. everything and helping people being free and independent. Definitely. Yeah. Really quickly, you told uh, the U.S. Senate that you didn't believe in those beliefs. Now you're telling me that they're not existent? We're just, but sir. So you got proof that they're doing that? Edward Snowden, a whistleblower, came out and said and proved and leaked the document. Oh, I know, I are, you, know. are you aware of the situation? Oh no, Edward Snowden. Heard of him. Yeah. But that's what you, the media, is saying. I don't know. Okay. 